Welcome back to IGN Live at Gamescom. Now it's time to take a look at a reboot of a horror adventure series that ran in the 2000s called Black Mirror. Martin here is the producer on the new Black Mirror. Welcome to the show. Good morning, how are you? Uh, now tell us about these games. Uh, I think the first one was from 2003 and it was a point and click gothic horror game, is that right? Exactly, it was a trilogy of uh, three point and click adventures from 2003 to 2010. Um, set in a, this gothic horror kind of setting that you know from Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, mm. so uh, the psychological horror basically. And uh, since the originals had a very closed up story and a very detailed mythology already, which is a big part of a horror game is just finding out about these things. Sure. Uh, we decided to, with a team that already worked on the originals, to kind of reboot the series and and have the option to already show the, all these stuff again, to, to kind of have the curiosity again of what is happening at this haunted house. Is there something supernatural going on or is this just madness? Are people just going insane? Mm -hmm. So now the way you interact with the world in the new game is uh, significantly different. Can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, as you can see now uh, in the in the footage of uh, from the game, this is from the beginning when the character basically first arrives at the house. He doesn't know a lot about his family, and it's a very cinematic experience now. We've we've gone for more close-ups and uh, a lot of cutscenes, more dramatic dialogues, um, as opposed to the classic point-and-click adventure situation where you're a bit further away with the cameras, um, just to give you you know more emotion. Your director with the c uh, at the at the characters and, and uh, more focused on the drama. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, in this case, the character just arrives, has a very cold welcome of his own grandmother because he's been raised far away from the family and his father now committed suicide and he's suddenly the sole heir to this ancient house. And the family is, as you can see from the face of this lovely lady, that she's not very happy that this outsider is suddenly the heir of uh, her house, basically. Mm -hmm. So they're not very happy he's here. He's mainly interested in finding out why his father killed himself. Um, so not so much in the heritage itself, since there's not much money left anyway. I was going to say, like, it, he should pass on the house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's it's haunted. <laughs> yeah, it's, ha there's, it's a strange house let full her, of strange people. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's mainly, he didn't know a lot about his father either. He had a strange... Uh, uh, difficult uh, relationship because his father um, was so obsessed with the family history and this idea that there's a curse on the family. And now he's there, he's also a rather a disturbed character who has had nightmares since he was a child and daydreams and all this kind of stuff. And now he gets to this castle and all things go, like everything gets worse and worse and worse. And they tell him his father was crazy. There's been tragedy all through his family history. And he obviously starts as is typical for Gothic horror, doubting his own mind. Um, so here you can see more like the, the modernized basically adventure gameplay that you probably know from other games as well. So mm -hmm. where it's a lot about interaction with uh, kind of close-up objects, looking at them and combining them. We have later in the game when you've got more locations and everything, we do have more complex puzzles as mm -hmm. the originals did, you know, you had to think. <laughs> so we did want to keep that in depending on where the story is. So when the story is a bit uh, moving faster or here at the beginning, the c puzzles are simpler in this case just to get some lights to be able to explore the castle. Mm -hmm. And later in the game, you've got parallel puzzle quests at the same time where you can switch between them, talk to a lot of people and switch between the locations when the story kind of, when it makes sense from a story point of view. Um, when the story is, you know, a chase or something, we, we utilize quick events, all this stuff that players already know. Um, so that we don't slow down the, the progress of the story. Yeah, so sure. when does this game take place? This is in 1926 okay. in Scotland. So the originals were uh, in England, and now we've moved it to Scotland. We have a Scottish writer on it, so there's a lot of British uh, accents. It's an ensemble cast of, of uh, great voice actors who did like a variety of different British accents, um, which was a lot of fun to record as well. And it's, it feels a bit older even, like, because it's an old castle, it's out in the countryside it, with, like, the old lady, like, dressing as if it was the 1800s rather than the 1900s, mm -hmm. so it's a bit of a mix, but as you can see from his, like, clothing, that uh, he's basically, like, coming in from a more modern perspective, like, modern in the sense of 1926. Well, like, they have lamps, but, like, the, there's that one character was just like, no, I'm going to stick with the candlestick. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're, uh, you're out in the, in the, um, in the highlands, so there's, it's not exactly like you have, like, a good internet connection or something. <laughs> um, and the old 1920s <laughs> internet. Yeah. <laughs> it was 
style in, maybe. <laughs> um, so, and what you can see here is we've moved away from the classic point-and-click adventure interface to a more 3D object-based interface. So you interact with the objects, you look, look for clues, this kind of stuff. Cool. So, so far we've seen David, the old lady, and the butler, I, mm -hmm. assume. Uh, I assume there are going to be other characters that are introduced over time? Exactly. So it's, it's tr uh, classic characters that you find in, in these kind of uh, stories. So we've really gone back to the original, what, what made the originals great, like the maid and the, the butler and the old lady of the house and, and the, the kind of creepy gardener who speaks in such heavy uh, Scottish accent that I think even English-speaking people might have to subtitle him. <laughs> um, here you can see like this level of detail as he just explores uh, kind of the castle. Um, so that was one key thing that uh, we know uh, still makes the originals very popular is this high level of detail in the locations. So we definitely wanted to bring that back um, so that when you walk and you explore the castle, you really have the feeling um, that this is a real place. And on top now, what, what you can see here is uh, outside of the castle in like this rundown chapel. Um, as I said, the big topic is like doubting your own sanity. Hmm. Um, also, as the hero, basically, so he starts doubting it more and more as he learns more about his family and that this is kind of like in their blood. And he starts having these nightmarish visions, which were always a part of the series. And in this case, we wanted to connect it to, to gameplay. So as the player explores the location, it, get, it becomes more and more surreal. In this case, like it becomes this kind of vision of an underwater lake like every lake is underwater, but mm -hmm. the bottom of a lake. Yep, sure. um, and he kind of unlocks this kind of visions, so from a player perspective, um, that for the hero at this point of the game, he does not know what those mean. Is this a waking dream, a nightmare? Is he going insane? Is this a suppressed memory? Has he been here as a child and nobody will tell him? Is this a vision of the future? What will happen? So this is all the stuff that he's basically trying to find oh, out at this point fish, fish while, yeah, <laughs> while trying not to kind of just go insane. So does this give you a sort of outlet to uh, introduce oh, no. a, a more kind of supernatural element to it that doesn't really fit into the the sort of more grounded flow of the of the regular story? Um, well, that's the thing to find out, basically. That's why we did the reboot, because the original already had like a very strong mythology. Mm -hmm. And now you can basically, again, kind of play the game and wonder whether there is something supernatural going on or whether there's just a mad murderer who's trying to kind of mess with your mind. Um, here you can see that this basically this vision is going on in the loop, in yeah. this case of a woman who drowned herself. If you walk closer to it, it slows down and you can then basically um, investigate it. Uh, at the you have to stop it at a certain point to get basically the, the, the clue that is hidden in there. In this case, if he stops it at the wrong time for too long, then this darkness that inhabits um, the holy state and this black mirror that you're kind of, uh, or whatever it is basically that you're trying to find out will uh, seep into the vision and kill him. Oh my gosh. So as in wow. the originals, it is possible to die. Yeah, um, all the deaths are handcrafted as we know that a lot of players of these games kind of want to watch, like they will kill him on purpose. <laughs> um, no, I mean, yeah. like, ever but since, that's yeah. been fun ever since Dragon's Lair. Yeah, you want no, to totally. see like, how exactly. he died in certain situations. And that's kind of like the rest, uh, the game in general <laughs> is not very bloody. It's not a splatter game. It's not, uh, it's not jump scare heavy. So it's more of a game for people who say like something like Outlast like stresses the shit out of me. So can I say shit? You anyway. just did. It's fine. Well. Uh, so I'm sorry <laughs> about that. Um, <laughs> so uh, games like this stress me out too much. So I'd rather have like a nice story with a bit of creepy atmosphere and this uh, kind of literature creepiness and like the most gruesome things that happen in the game will happen in your head as you imagine the things that you get told. So this is just a little bit of gameplay where he's kind of like, you're helping him calm down after a heavy uh, experience yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. interesting. Now, who's this dame? That's just shown up. Uh, that Chinese is the, 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 yeah. <laughs> the, <time>. the colloquial <laughs> yeah. terms. Yeah. Yeah. That is go. basically the heroine of the game, like the second kind of uh, hero, if you will. Um, she's uh, a psychologist who treated your father mm -hmm. and basically has some unfinished business because she felt like there was something wrong and she knows that, that now the, her patient killed himself. And she, so she basically tries to uh, kind of keep you from going down the same path and be the voice of reason, kind of. It's like a Fox Mulder and Scully kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, yeah. 
Now, when you're sort of the players are poking around this house, they're going to do a lot of puzzle solving and get through a lot of scenarios that will sort of advance the story. But there are, are there sort of like more secret things? Are there things that will sort of like add to the lore that aren't necessarily locked or tied to progression, but will sort of help build the world out more? Of course, there's like the whole kind of world. Like we're trying to, to give you the sense of that this is uh, a house that has a very, very long history. So even the house itself is built like that there's the old wing that you that is half broken because it's been the oldest castle that has then ex been extended and stuff like this. So we really want to give you the sense that you're coming in at 1926, but this house has always been there. Like in some way or form, this is kind of the, the house itself is nearly a character in all of the games. This is, by the way, the the, the creepy gardener. Um, He's yeah. terrifying. <laughs> yeah. And um, so this is kind of the, the sense that we try and convey, and that's why it's so nice to finally be able to explore it like freely, the house, because it's really about this, okay, this place has always been there, and whatever was there when they already built it was probably been there even longer. Mm. And this is this kind of like a situation that you're trying to explore and without maybe losing your mind. Is the game entirely set in the castle? No, uh, we are showing here now mainly the castle because we don't want to uh, kind yeah, of spoil sure. everything ahead because sure. the game comes out at the end of November. Uh, so we uh, also kind of show in it, uh, we announced it rather late so that we can immediately show, we know reboot is a sensitive subject for a lot of gamers mm. and we wanted to immediately show like this is a reboot but we care very mm -hmm. highly about the originals. We have the team that worked on some of the originals. We brought them back in and uh, wanted to immediately show like, look, this is why and this is how we basically trying to push the game forward. And so you're later exploring the whole estate around and, and the, the forests and all everything that's creepy dark and, yep. and kind of scary, we explore. Now yeah. we saw uh, the main character there having dialogue with the terrifying gardener man who I'm very scared of. Uh, we saw different <coughs> dialogue options there. Is that going to lead into kind of different narrative directions? Will players see ah, different outcomes? Ah. Oh my god, I don't like Yum, him at all. <laughs> Um, it's not, it doesn't strand out the story in any way, so yeah, you, you don't unlock like different endings or okay. stuff like this. Mm -hmm. It's rather about how the characters then react to you and what kind of options you might, you know, block for yourself. Like a certain puzzle might then be only solvable in, a cer in another way if you've basically, if you have a bad situation with the butler and he'll just see like, well, now you're not getting the key, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then you just have to find a way to break in the door or something like this. So yeah. not, not the kind of like, does he die or not situation mm -hmm. is not this kind of thing. So it's, a, it's a, a spooky adventure game with lots of exploration and, and dialogue. Are there any action sequences? Um, it's all basically just, derived from the story. Like yeah. we've, as well with the complexity of the puzzles, when the game is slower or the slower pace, we have more complex puzzles. When there's a chase sequence, when they're fighting, then it's QTA events and stuff like this. There's not an actual like uh, fighting system or something, so they don't suddenly go into kind of <laughs> uh, <laughs> like Street Fighter <laughs> mode in between because that would not Maybe. really fit the franchise that well. Um, Maybe so it could yeah. be like a post-credit sequence. Yeah, yeah the afterwards, <laughs> you just fight with the old lady. And <laughs> <laughs> just I want to see you would be great that actually. gardener. I don't like him. No. <laughs> uh, uh, of course, this game is set what 60 years before uh, Ryu ever hadoukened anyone. That's true. <laughs> could be an inventor of the Hadouken. Yeah. Now, what were some of the inspirations for the sort of tone and the theme of this game? Well, first of all, the original trilogy. As I said, like the, the visuals of the original trilogy still hold up very well because the locations are very detailed. They were pre-rendered scenes back then. Mm. And apart from that, the gothic horror genre, like the Edgar Allan Poe, your H.P. Lovecraft, E.T.A. Hoffman, all these stories about your, uh, like the horrors of the mind and what what lengths people will go to if they're under heavy pressure and maybe even something dark like pushing them over the edge. Like everybody who's close to this house somehow, if you're just normally, you know, a bit, you're a, an angry guy, if you're near the house, you're, you're proper mad. So this is this kind of thing like as if it's something is pushing you always a little further than you'd normally go. So it brings out the best in you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What's really cool about this uh, reboot or reimagining of Black Mirror is that even more gamers are going to get to experience it now because the original trilogy were PC games and now this one's coming to console as well. Is that correct? Exactly. It's coming out uh, end of November on PC Mac Linux. Uh, so it also has a mouse. You can play it with the mouse and WSD or with the controller. And for the first time, the franchise also is available for PS4 and Xbox One. Very cool. cool. Yeah. Martin, thanks so much for coming by the show.
Uh, uh, thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> about the, about the <laughs> language. Hadouken indeed. <laughs> Stay tuned. Much more to come from day three of our live Gamescom coverage after this.